good boy. He wanted to approach the cat. Mm -hmm. He approached, but then, oh, I was more interesting because I had food. Right, right. So as soon as, and again, as soon as that dog backs off from the kitty or looks away or turns away or does some different body language, that's when you're reinforcing it. That's when you're reinforcing that good behavior. So um, real appropriate. The kitty's relaxed around the dog, so that's a really, really nice thing. Um, Buddy the cat is really quite a, a, a nice cat as far as just, you know, um, really very is able. Very tolerant. Very tolerant. Is really able to um, um, address his personality as far as like what kind of dog am I dealing with at this point. So um, certainly can take the lead on if it needs to be uh, on the offense or the defense, but also is very comfortable being around a dog as long as the dog respects Buddy. So and that's the most important thing. So there's all kinds of different mixes and I will we will talk briefly just briefly very rarely but sometimes guys it just doesn't work. <laughs> there are cases where it is dangerous for a dog and a cat to live together. Be it either the dog is not necessarily looking at the cat as as somebody to live with but more as a situation that um, they want to harm that cat. Um, they have a very strong prey drive and just like small animals, rabbits, those types of things, they potentially could kill a cat. So in those particular cases, obviously we don't, we don't encourage that at all. Right. Um, we discourage and in, that. And until you know that right. there is no danger of that happening, you right. should never leave a cat and a dog alone together. That's absolutely true. And the other thing is, is that on rare occasions, we will see cats that will literally stalk dogs. Exactly. Um, we've had it, I think we probably had five or eight cats over a course of oh, several years that actually um, did everything they possibly could to get to a dog because they mm -hmm. wanted to attack it. Right. They maybe had a bad experience with a dog mm -hmm. and, and are reliving that and don't want any dogs right. in their territory at all. Right. And again, unless you're a, a very, very good handler and you have a lot of behavioral skill, um, we just don't, uh, we don't encourage that for the average pet owner. Um, that would be something that we would encourage to bring a professional in um, or not do it at all, mm -hmm. period. Right. Okay, and this is Emma. Emma is um, a kitty that's been at the shelter for a long time. She's a little female. I think she's around three years old. She's not nearly as comfortable with dogs as Buddy was. So we just want to uh, show you just kind of a different reaction from the cat's perspective. And we're going to watch the body language. So with that, we're going to uh, bring um, the little beagle back. And um, you'll see, okay, you'll see how she backs up. She's actually looking for an escape. Now he's much more interested in this one because she's moving. She's much more active. So that's where some of that prey drive comes in. And that isn't that Banjo wants to hurt this kitty. Banjo just, you know, they move, I chase. That's what I do, okay? Look at the body language on her. See the hair up? See, see the tail flick? She's looking for an escape. Yeah, okay. So, um, Cheryl, I'm just going to encourage you to do one more approach, and I want you guys to watch, again, watch the body language from her perspective. Excellent. Good boy. Good boy, Banjo. Good boy. See that? She just gave a, you know, little snarl there and just Wrinkled kinda... up her nose and hissed yep. a little bit, yep. telling him, back off. Yep. And Banjo, being respectful, did that. Yeah. Actually, very, very, very good. But you know, this is a this was a fairly mild reaction on her part. But obviously, it, it could get worse and nastier. And again, it all happens in a matter in a split second. Yeah. And so, so you need to be prepared. You do. You need to think this through. You need to have two people. You need to just like Cheryl's got the leash. Um, we we had this planned out. It's it's really something that you want you want to have your treats ready. You want to, you know, if you... Something else, if you could just take Banjo sure. for a minute, something else that you can use is, let's say that your cat's having a negative reaction. You don't want to touch your cat. If you want to get in between the right. cat or the dog, you could use something like a soft bed or a towel. Right. 
redirect the cat and have the person take the dog out of the room um, oh. and try to redirect your cat into its safe place. Don't try to pick up your cat. Your cat is overstimulated. It's kind of re like redirected aggression. Your cat could be very frightened from the experience with the dog. And you go to pick up your cat and console it, and your cat is so overstimulated, it scratches and bites you. Right. So rather than trying to pick up your kitty, uh, again, it isn't that you don't care about your kitty, but right now your kitty is overexcited. Sure. And just safely take a towel and or a bed and just kind of, come on, let's go, let's go. Right. And using the bed to, uh, that way if they're going to scratch or bite at something, they're going to be scratching or biting at the towel and or a bed or right. something to protect you until your kitty has time to settle down. Right. And then try, you know, wait a day, wait, you know, several hours uh, before you try to introduce again. You want to give everybody time to, to quiet down. Um, I actually had a situation years ago when I brought one of my dogs home who um, really was very interested in chasing the cats. Uh -huh. And it took two weeks for us to work with that, and that was through dragging a leash in the household. And again, every time that that dog um, even looked at the cat, um, I would pick up the leash and give a pop and say, leave it. And as soon as the dog did, then I would reward that through a lot of praise. And so after a period of two weeks, we did very, very well together. And then the dog did learn that I'm not allowed to look at the cat unless the cat initiates the, the play and, and the interaction to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's, it takes some time. It does take and, time. But we also have to remember that this type of training, this type of introduction will be beneficial because hopefully you're going to be having your cat and dog 10 to 15 years. Sure, and sure. you want to make sure that that's a positive, long-lasting relationship. Well, I think we're just about ready to wrap it up today, Cheryl. Okay. So um, again, we hope that you guys have um, learned something through this process and we also want to encourage you um, if you have any questions certainly to contact us. Right and we also have some written materials mm -hmm. that are available on our website that people can uh, download if they're interested in uh, more information on how to introduce a cat to a dog and so until next time Happy, happy tales, tales to you! you.